Hello, CIS family. Before we start, I'd like to give you a reminder. We're going to have a Lord's table today. We're going to do, you know, uh, we'd like to partake of the Lord's table with you, you know, online. So if you haven't prepared the bread, the juice yet, uh, pause right now and then get it. At the end of the message, we're going to do a uh, Lord's table together as a community. Okay, let's worship.
CIC family, it's good to see you again. Uh, we are in a series called The Begin Again, and this is the last part of the series. And throughout the series, we've been looking at the story of Israelites' departure from Egypt to the Promised Land. And maybe we were, before this series, expecting that this day, the day of departure, must be very uh, exciting and, and, and just full of, uh, full of uh, joy and hope, but as we uh, looked at the story last three weeks, uh, it was uh, kind of like unnoticed. It was really like kind of like out of sudden uh, uh, movement they had to take. And uh, still, we were looking at how God has been faithful to them even in the first day of their departure. And uh, we've been looking at uh, his faithfulness, and the same way, uh, likewise, he's faithful to us who are in a new beginning, uh, new year, 2021, uh, in the situation we never experienced before, the pandemic situation. And some of us are in a very tricky, shaky, uncertain situation to take this new journey. And we've been, and we've been learning uh, from uh, this story of Exodus uh, how uh, God is faithful 
uh, to them and how God is faithful to you and me. So like I said, this is the last part of the series. We're going to jump into today's text. The text we've been looking at, the same passage we've been looking at last three weeks. It's book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 31 to 42. During the night, Pharaoh summoned, uh, summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as you have said, and go and also bless me. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country, for otherwise, they said, we will all die. So the people took their dough before the east was added and carried it on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and they gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. The Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Succoth. There were about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. Many other people went up with them, and also large droves of livestock, both flocks and herds. With the dough the Israelites had brought from Egypt, they baked loaves of unleavened bread. The dough was without yeast because they had been driven out of Egypt and did not have time to prepare food for themselves. Now the length of time the Israelites, Israelite people lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of 430 years to the very day, all the Lord's divisions left Egypt because the Lord kept vigil that night to bring them out of Egypt. On this night, uh, all the Israelites are to keep vigil to honor, honor the Lord for the generations to come. I like to start this little jokes, you know, about uh, like how you Photoshop a person or thing, and that kind of makes us laugh, okay? Uh, you will kind of get it once you see it. Uh, let me start with... Uh, uh, an actress, Ellen Page, <laughs> and uh, this is her, right? This is Ellen Page, and if you add more of Ellen Pages, this is Ellen, uh, Ellen Book, <laughs> and then if you got more of them, then Ellen, Ellen Library. Uh, funny, huh? Okay, here's one more. Uh, you all know this old actor, uh, very famous. He's uh, a, a movie director too, Clint Eastwood, okay? This is Clint Eastwood, and this is Clint Westwood. Ha, 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 ha. I know you're laughing right now. Uh, how about this? A uh, very famous musician, okay? Ray. And here is Blu-ray. <laughs> okay. How about the, the, many, uh, the, the brand, the car brand that we see very often in Korea, uh, Kia, okay? This is a Kia, and this is Nokia. Kia is gone, okay. Last, uh, very famous actor, Morgan Freeman. This is Morgan Freeman, uh, and this is Morgan, not Freeman. Uh, I don't know if you, you know, these photos kind of made you laugh or not, but uh, I don't know, I kind of like, I do like these kind of things. And the reason why I like these kind of little, you know, jokes uh, is that uh, I love the creativity of it, you know. People see things, you know, that other people, you know, don't see. And they like to share that. And other people see it and they're like, oh, that's funny. And I really like the part of that. Uh, we've been talking about this new beginning, okay, of New Year 2021. And some of us are very nervous about it. Some of us very, uh, you know, and shaky about this new year. And one of the reasons must be is that we don't really see what to come. Uh, and we don't really know uh, how to prepare for what to come because we don't really see what to come. And uh, like I said earlier, uh, if you look at Israelites uh, in this, the, the day uh, the, when, when they leave, Egypt, the very first day, uh, we can see that they were not ready at all. They were not prepared fully at all. And we talked about it last week. And obviously, they were not seeing, you know, what to come either. 
uh, like we are right now in this COVID-19 situation. Uh, then what should we do? What should we really see? You know, everywhere we look around, we don't really find the thing that we can really rely on. We can't really find something that's stable enough. We can feel safe about this new year. Then what should we look at? Uh, I mean, does it even really matter? Uh, recently, I uh, found a very interesting uh, spot or a restaurant, okay? This restaurant is a uh, you know, big franchise restaurant, and you all, most of you probably been to this restaurant before. Uh, it's a pizza hut, okay? Uh, I don't know if you like pizza hut pizzas. Uh, I'm more like Domino's guy, not pizza hut guy. Uh, so I recently, I rarely went to Pizza Hut for pizzas, okay? And as you know, Pizza Hut is a pizza brand franchise, global pr franchise. So you can actually go to Pizza Hut here in Korea. You can go to Pizza Hut like in Japan. You can go to Pizza Hut like other countries too. So they are all over the world. And among thousands of Pizza Hut, uh, restaurants out there, there's one very famous one, very famous pizza out restaurant, and uh, I'd like to introduce that one, okay? This, uh, this pizza out uh, restaurant, uh, according to the Google rating, uh, you know, rated by those uh, people who visited this restaurant, uh, doesn't really have a good pizza. You may say, oh, Pizza Hut, they all, don't they all have the same taste pizza? No, if you actually go to different branches, you know, there is slight differences. And this Pizza Hut is not really well known for its taste, okay? And if you look at the building, the building looks very old and ghetto too. The picture, I'll, I'll show you the photo of it. You see? Very old and ghetto and it looks like there's nothing good near this restaurant, even inside the restaurant. And you don't even really get much expectation just, you know, out of looking at it. Uh, so you may say there's nothing special about this in a Pizza Hut restaurant, but there's one thing. Uh, this Pizza Hut branch uh, has like as, as a strongest uh, a side, which is the view. I know, looking at the photo of the restaurant, you may say, oh, I don't know, from there what you can see. But this Pizza Hut branch has world famous view. Like no other restaurants out there can beat this. So let me show you the photo. Yes, this Pizza Hut branch is located right in front of pyramids and Sphinx. So the, uh, though the quality of food is not that great, uh, you know, looking, the building is kind of old and ghetto, yet when you eat your pizza, not that super quality pizza, you still can enjoy this amazing view, that, you know, that amazing, uh, the structure that was built like thousands and thousands of years ago. And you can enjoy that view, just eating, just sitting there and eating your pizza. So this restaurant is so popular, so hot place for that. And many people kind of lined up to get in there. And that kind of, th th this, uh, this restaurant amazed me because, uh, I mean, quality of food obviously got to, I mean, it matters. And, and where you eat, like the building you're in, and how, how recently it's built, how, how, how fancy it is, you know, they all matter. Yet, you still, people still go there and eat there, though those things are not that great as expected, they, people still go there, eat their pizza because they like to enjoy what they see. You know, where they're in right now may not be great. What they eat right now may not be that awesome. But what you can see, if that is great, they, I mean, these people are saying that is a great place. Maybe Israelites are in the same place. They are leaving Egypt, okay? This departure day, uh, they're not ready, uh, but still they are taking off. They're taking the, their first step uh, of this journey. Why? Because the situation they're in right now may not seem that great. They're not really ready. You know, they don't really have much, to, much prepared to eat. 
uh, they, are, they, have, they have journey ahead of them and they never been to before, yet they are taking that first step. They're taking that journey. They're taking that process. Why? Because what they saw was uh, good enough. It was God. Uh, if you look at this passage, verse 41 and 42, it goes like this. At the end of the 430 years to the very day, it's that day, okay, all the Lord's divisions left Egypt because the Lord kept vigil that night to bring them out of Egypt. On this night, all the Israelites are to keep a vigil to honor the Lord for the generations to come. From these two verses, we can see how this whole journey is even possible in the first place. It wasn't Israelites' plan. It wasn't Israelites' vision. It wasn't Israelites, you know, their, their ability to, to plan out everything. It was solely, there are two things. Number one, they're God's people. They're aware of that. It says all the divisions of God left Egypt. They knew that they were fully aware that they were God's people. And number two, Lord kept the vigil, which means God was watching over them. He didn't fall asleep. Uh, throughout the night, God was up, wide awake, to watch over his people. Though we are in a little different situation, we're not leaving Egypt, we're not taking the journey from Egypt to promised land, yet facing this new year, these two things still stand. We are God's people. And, and your God, my God, our God, watch over us maybe that's something we have to see though the situation you're in i am in we are in right now may not be super satisfying and not that promising yet yet <laughs> though you're eating that not that very low quality pizza and the building you're in not that fancy what you can see god's faithfulness that you are looking at the fact that you and I, we are God's people, and our God will always watch over us. If we can see that, then it's worth it. Then this journey is worth to take. Uh, how can we trust him then? How can we trust that he is our God and he watches over us? Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I'm, I'm a big baseball fan, and I love playing baseball. I love watching baseball. And I'm a, I'm a Seattle Mariners fan in, in state. I know. We've been struggling for many years. Since 2001, we've been, like, down there. Anyway, and here I am a Hanwha Eagles fan. I don't know how many Hanwha Eagles fan out there, but I like, I like I love this city. I love you guys. And I love the fact that you guys live in this city. <laughs> and I love Hanwha Eagles. So anyway, so I've been a fan of Hanwha Eagles for many years. And a couple years ago... <laughs> Uh, they were not really, they haven't been doing good, well, last like 20 years, I think, <laughs> okay? Well, like last place or second to last or third to last, that's, I mean, where they have been last 15, 20 years. But a couple of years ago, I don't know if you remember this, but they were doing, uh, they were doing okay, okay? They were in the, they ended in the third place. Anyway, that year, that season, I went to see their game I think seven, eight times. And out of seven, eight times, I saw them winning six, seven times. So, you know, it was, it was good. Anyway, so I went to one of their games. It was, I think, September somewhere there. And I was watching with my family in the outfield section. And I experienced something amazing, okay? I saw uh, his name is a short, his, his position was a shortstop. And he, his, uh, his name is Ha Chuseok, Chuseok Ha. Anyway, he hit, hit a ball really hard, and he flew right. It looked, like, it, looked, it looked like it just was flying right, you know, toward me. So I took out my glove, baseball glove, and tried to catch it, but it kind of got drifted a little bit, and it went like that way. And I was like, oh, no. And like I said, I was standing in the uh, outfield uh, section, so if I catch the ball, it's a home run, okay? I thought it was home run. But like I said, it's got drifted a little bit. It went this way. And then I saw that a woman, okay? A woman, I don't know, like mid-30, she actually got hit by that ball. 
and her belly. <laughs> Straight from the batter to her belly, okay? No stop, no, like, uh, it didn't go to, like, grounded in the air, straightforward, to her belly. I was like, oh, you're really shocking. I was like, whoa, everybody around there, including me, were like, whoa. Uh, you may think I just made up the story. So I actually prepared the video, <laughs> OK? Here is the video. See, see, I wasn't lying, okay? <laughs> and I am a baseball player too. And I know that really hurts. I mean, if you, if you just got hit by baseball, like really just slow, slowly, then still see it hurts. The professional batter hit the ball and it goes like this straight to your belly. It is seriously, it's serious pain. And that was an amazing scene that I, I, I saw. But the more amazing part came after that. Uh, I was like, whoa, look at her. Oh, she must be in a lot of pain. And I can actually see the pain in her face. And what happened after that was she was like in the, the like a lot of pain. And then she, uh, she put out her, her, the, the baseball uh, she just caught and gave that to her sons. And those two sons, really happy. <laughs> they were like, well, they didn't really, I don't know, al almost like they didn't, I mean, apparently they didn't really care about how painful, you know, their, their mother must be right now. <laughs> but it didn't really matter. They were just so happy. And then I also saw that the mother, the mother just looking at the boys being happy, she was happy too. I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is his mother's love. Uh, so you may not believe it. So here is the clip, the video clip of that too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and seeing this whole thing, I was thinking, wow, this is so, you know, biblical. <laughs> this is God's love right there. You know, this mother didn't mind, you know, just taking the pain. Maybe she, well, she didn't really choose to take the pain and get the ball yet. She didn't mind going through the pain to make the boys happy. Just giving, handing over that baseball that she got, uh, you know, with that belt. I think she must think that, she, she must thought that, you know, it was worth it. It was worth the pain. Just, you know, see that little boy is being happy. Uh, our God did the same thing. He didn't mind coming to the earth as, as, a, as a human, fully man. Fully God, too, but fully man like you and me. And here, mind getting tortured, humiliated, and murdered on the tree called the cross. And through that pain, through that sacrifice, God showed us how, how uh, faithful He is and how much He loves us. Uh, Israelites, they're leaving right now, Egypt. Uh, they must be really nervous. They, this is a journey they never took before. This, they are heading to somewhere they probably never even imagined before. And they're not ready yet. They are taking this journey. Why? Because they remember God is our God and He will watch over us. With that, I guess it's, it's, it's enough to take the first step. It's enough to take this journey. We are in a very unusual beginning of a new year, 2021. Uh, you must be a little nervous. I'm nervous. We're still doing this online. Yet, uh, there are two things never change. Our God is our God, and He watches over you, watches over me. Uh, so, let's take the first step. Uh, we, you, we took first step already. It's end of January now. 
Oh, we got only 11 months left. All things can get worse, yet our God, His love for us will get even deeper. So let's go. Let's take this journey. Now I'd like to invite you to Lord's table. Before Jesus was arrested, uh, He was having this dinner uh, with a uh, must be a farewell p- a party for uh, His disciples. He was having dinner with His disciples and He uh, share the bread and he broke it and he shared the cup and then he said okay this is uh, my blood that's shed for you and this is my uh, body that's broken for you and every time you do this I want you to remember me uh, there are a lot of good must be good memories Jesus could shared with his disciples you know he walked on water that must be awesome he fed 5,000 plus that must be awesome too he healed you know those people who were sick he cast the demons out of demon possessed people yet out of all those amazing memories he asked his disciples to remember one thing one thing alone which is his cross his body that's broken for us His blood that's shed for us. So this time, I'd like to have your bread and have your cup. And as you break it, and as you uh, take the cup, I want you to do the same. I want us to do the same. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ, whose body was broken for us, whose blood was uh, shed for us. And as we do that, As we face this unusual new year, 2021, uh, other than all things out there, we want Jesus to walk in our lives. We want Jesus to be in our words. We want Jesus to be in our thoughts. We want Jesus to be in our hearts. We want Jesus to be at our work. We want you to be with us. Though New Year 2021 is strange. Your faithfulness will not change. So I want that to be your prayer and my prayer as we partake Lord's Day. So break your bread. This is the body of Christ that's broken for you. Take your cup. This is blood of Christ that's shed for you. Father God, you're an awesome God, and thank you that you are a faithful God. Thank you that you're our God. Thank you that you are God who watches over us. Uh, we are facing this unusual beginning of a new year, 2021, and some of our church family is not really uh, doing well, and they're facing some challenging moments of their lives. Please bless them, bless us, bless all of us, and you be the one who guides our lives. And help us remember that cross, your body, your blood that's broken for us and shed for us. And that love of cross, that sacrifice, that grace be our power to take, to face this new journey. You're awesome, God. I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.